One of the most integral parts to fully experiencing a role-playing mod pack like Wildlander is actually being able to roleplay a character with their own unique feelings, opinions, and goals. Sometimes I get locked into just playing like I myself would if I were in my character's circumstances, not really taking into account their own unique personality and characteristics and how they would react. Because I've played Wildlander quite a bit and have hosted several playthrough videos, i picked up on some different strategies for building a satisfying character where you can experience the world of Wildlander through their eyes. Before I begin making my character, I plan out what does their background story look like? What relevant pieces of who they are brought them here to begin with? Building a character's backstory can seem overwhelming. A common mistake I made was trying to tie the story into Wildlander perfectly. The important thing to remember when making a backstory is that it guides your character in a general direction so that they have a purpose and reason to be doing whatever it is that they are doing. For example, did some bandits kidnap a family member, and you are searching for them, willing to do anything to find them? Maybe you've heard rumors of her being taken to Markarth, and you're traveling there to learn more. Not only does this call your character to action to speak with everyone they can to find their family member, but they will also lean more towards being willing to do whatever they have to, good or bad, to find them. I recommend leaving your character room for growth. It can be tempting to write a 30-page essay about all of the details surrounding your character. However, if your character has already been through many adventures experiencing everything imaginable, it can be difficult for them to have room to grow and learn as a person. Also, it can break immersion to have this character who's had all of these experiences and battles but can barely cast candlelight. My rule of thumb is two to four major points. For example, point one, I was a farmer's boy who learned to forage for things and train animals. Point two, I've never left my hometown of Morthal, and I swear never to return until I finish seeing the big wide world. And point three, I'm also fascinated with the return of the dragons, and am determined to understand where they came from. While this isn't incredibly specific, it leaves a lot of room to fill the canvas with as I play, and that's partially by design. The next piece when it comes to background is whether or not I want my backstory to connect to the game heavily, or for it to be more of a sideline background sort of motivation. What I mean by this is, because Skyrim cannot naturally adapt certain backstories such as a family member being kidnapped, as I will never hear from an NPC that they've heard rumors about my family's whereabouts, I would use this as an initial motivator and will have to create any follow-up events myself. Maybe I find them dead as they were slain by bandits, or I receive a letter from them that they've left Skyrim entirely. This is an example of a sideline backstory. A more direct connection in-game, my character has heard a voice since he was young, telling him that one day he would conquer an indomitable force using the voice. This could very easily connect in-game as I learn from different NPCs what the voice is. Who is Alduin, and is he the force that the voice told me about? Something else to keep in mind is that not everything has to be fleshed out entirely before you start. In some ways, having just a skeleton fleshed out is more fun and easier to roleplay with because leaving room to adjust as needed makes it easier for the story you are building within Wildlander. Maybe the voice speaking to me wasn't Akatosh, but Azura. Not only did she see this coming and let me down this path, but I'm also left to recreate her star and rid it of those who are dwelling within. Once the backstory portion is sketched out, I like to focus on my character's personality. Having a backstory on its own without a personality makes it much harder to get into my character because they're left shallow without any kind of depth and human connection. The first big question that needs answered is, do they lean more towards being good, a neutral character, or evil? My most recent playthrough was a character named Cellcap. I built him using inspiration from Frieza of the Dragon Ball series. He was very powerful naturally and had disdain for those around him. He considered less than. Selkath leaned more towards being an evil character with almost no concern for the lives of people around him. 
After this is established, and you have a good sense of what kinds of decisions a character would make generally, I like to think about if they are a strong personality or a softer personality. What this means is, they are willing to be more abrasive and say slash do the harsher things such as intimidate someone, or tell them the difficult truth regardless of how it will make someone feel, or will they be more likely to say nicer things that others want to hear. This part can be very important because varied dialogue options that actually affect gameplay and story in Skyrim aren't incredibly common, so when they do appear it helps to make the most of them by getting into character when you have these sorts of questions answered ahead of time. This next part is by no means a requirement, but for me really pulls me into a character when I'm playing. Do you want to have a specific voice for your character? Linking back to Selkath, I made my own voice reenactment of Frieza, and when speaking to people I tried to use language that fit the theme of belittling others and having a brisk arrogance about myself. I often chose dialogue that was very disagreeable as long as it suited my purposes, and I even wrote in my backstory a powerful hatred for the giants, as they were one of the few things in Skyrim that Selkath truly was fearful of. I do continue to go back to the Frieza example, which I think is another great way to build a character, especially when you're having a hard time making one yourself. Use inspiration from some of your favorite shows, movies, comic books, etc. I'm a big fan of anime-style shows, so people like Itachi Uchiha from the Naruto series is one of my favorite characters. I can either build another character like him, or I can simply take elements about him and pull them into my own creation. Maybe my character isn't into magic, but does dip his toe into illusion. I can pull inspiration from Itachi and help focus my illusion abilities on causing confusion and fear in the enemies around me. Something else to think about is if your character worships a deity. If so, taking time to make sure you know a bit about the deity helps shape the way your character might handle things. For example, worshiping Meridia will give a natural disdain for the undead. You will be much more encouraged to cleanse Skyrim of all the undying creatures taking refuge inside different caves and ruins, all in the name of Meridia. Or you don't worship any god in particular. However, as time goes on, you find yourself in connection with a deity, and slowly your faith and commitment to them grows, which helps your character evolve and grow as an individual. Leaving room for this type of growth can be powerful because it helps make your character more dynamic. They're not just some texture on a screen, but rather they are someone who evolves over the course of your gameplay because of their different experiences. The final area of discussion for personality would be the boundaries your character has. Are they someone who is completely unwilling to steal from others? Or are these lines blurred for them and they take no issue in taking what they believe to be theirs in the first place? Or they hate the Stormcloaks and will do almost nothing to support them, potentially going so far as to fight against them in the Civil War. The point of creating these boundaries is to help steer your character away from blending into the natural Skyrim playthrough where you are everything. You are a thief, but also a thane, but also a dark brotherhood, but also a companion who also happens to be part of the college, etc. I think you get the point I'm trying to make here. The next domain I like to step into is build ideas slash skill planning. First and foremost, what race are you? Now this question isn't, what race do you want to be, it's more of what race or races make sense given your backstory. If your character grew up trained in a number of martial abilities that were honed as a child by the people he lived with, something like Imperial makes a lot of sense. Or if they were nomadic, being forced from town to town because of undue hatred placed on them. Argonians or Khajiit are great choices and very easy to roleplay with as this background. It's not that you can't play whatever race you want, but it can be very helpful from a roleplay aspect to choose your race based off of your backstory as an additional reminder that this character is not you. Their experiences are grounded in the world of Wildlander. The next part of skill planning is what do they already know how to do? 
Are they equipped with the swords constantly swinging and getting better at handling themselves? Do they not have any experience with bows but have a desire to learn how to wield one? In this case, they probably wouldn't put any of their first six points into archery since this gives your character enhanced stats for those six choices. Instead, they would put them in areas they already have experience with, such as the armor they wear, whatever artisan skills they have, and their weapon of choice. For the initial start, I recommend choosing a minimum of one artisan job, such as smithing, one armor slash protection method, such as heavy armor, and two sources of damage. The damage type and armor type can be flipped where instead you have two armor types such as alteration and light armor, or blocking and heavy armor, where you only have one form of damage to start with. This should leave you with two floating options to choose from, whether you would like your character to pursue or they are already experienced in these areas. There's also a skill planner that lets you use your perk points ahead of time to see what your build would look like down the road, which helps you get an idea of what level you'll need to be for different enhancements throughout your story. This is by no means a requirement. I have personally not used it to build a character. However, if you're having a hard time understanding what options are available to you near the end of the game, this is a useful tool. While doing some planning with your build, something to keep in mind is the general scope of content you'd like to play through in this run. What I mean by this is, there's some content in the game that will either be incredibly difficult or impossible with certain playstyles. Keeping this in mind, a question to ask yourself is, am I trying to beat the entire game up to and including Merak? Or do I have specific goals I'm aiming for that will complete my playthrough, such as completing the Thieves Guild questline? Another element that affects your options are weapons and armors that you can get. Even with some of the less overpowered builds, you can make them possible with the right planning. For instance, if you opt into the Atronaut Stone and are partially a melee character and partially a magic character, it helps make this build more viable if you choose to pursue weapons or enchantments that steal magicka from enemies. This allows you to make use of the melee side of your character while also bolstering your magic based side. The final realm I think about before starting a new character is using what I've created about my character to determine what quest lines would my character never take part in. Are they absolutely against all Daedra and so anything involving Daedra they will steer clear of? Are they a lawful good person who is fully against quests such as the Dark Brotherhood or Thieves Guild? Or potentially, their mage who was ushered out of the college and due to a hatred for the college, they will never return, and so that questline is essentially out of the discussion for them. On the flip side, what questlines is your character 100% going to take part in? Should they be a dragon porn, or will that detract from their story? These types of questions help narrow your focus so that you don't get caught trying to do too much in one playthrough. It also helps to have 1-2 to two early and mid-game goals for a character. For example, an early goal can be to join the companions and work your way up the ranks. This helps with a way to make money, plant your character's feet somewhere, and gives you quests to explore a bit. Assuming you choose to go the Dragonborn route, a good mid-game goal would be to slay a dragon and visit the Greybeards. Again, this is intentionally limited in its requirements because it leaves room for a dynamic experience with these goals. Finally, a couple small helpful points. Firstly, I am not someone who has a vast experience with all of the lore and quests within Skyrim. Especially early on, it made planning for a character more difficult because I didn't really know what to plan for. This can actually make it easier to plan because instead of focusing on planning pieces of your character's future, it's easier to sort of just fall into events. My advice here is to start in a hold you haven't spent much time in, not Morthal, and slowly talk to everyone there. Explore the environment, and unless the quests you find are in the realm that your character wouldn't partake in, I jump into them as their difficulty enters the realm of possibility. The next small point is, if you feel certain areas are lacking in Wildlander that limit your ability to have fun, I recommend checking out the Discord and seeing the different mods that can easily be added that improve different areas of the game, such as adding beats to the game, randomizing the game's starting season which helps keep the early game fresh, 
or something like Skyrim Souls which disables pause menus. This for me helps me stop disconnecting from the game every time I look through my inventory or try to use a potion mid-fight and have an infinite amount of time to think about it. Quick disclaimer for this, adjusting anything within the mod list can cause a number of in-game issues and potentially lead to a broken save slash character, so proceed at your own risk. Once you've done all of this, I would start up the game and begin your adventure. Was there anything I missed that you would advise to enhance the ability to roleplay? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, consider subscribing, stay safe Oddlanders.